Hey, Chandler, how are you? Sammy, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. I'm really excited for this conversation. For those who haven't heard about you or listened to your TED Talk or anything, tell a little bit about your journey and where you came from. Yeah, I run an online education company called Self Publishing School, born and raised South Carolina, based out of Texas. Currently, um, really college dropout, C-level English student with ADHD who somehow ended up writing books and running this school. But I really fell in love with the books. And I believe that books change lives. They change the lives of the reader and they change the lives of the author. And so that's what self-publishing school is all about. We help people write and publish books that grow their impact, their income, and their business if they have one. We're one of the 5,000 fastest growing private companies in the U.S. We've grown a lot and we've published about 6,000 books in the last seven years. And yeah, we're just getting started. That's awesome, man. But people think of reading a book, especially in information age when everything's on your phone and you have a 10 second attention span, how to sit down and read a book for somebody who has ADHD. How did you get from college dropout and ADHD to reading books and falling in love with books? Yeah, I think I dropped out of school, but I, I, I knew that I needed to keep learning like I was still in school. And so I felt like I dropped out of school at about two years which was pretty frustrating because I felt like I got all the prereqs and none of the actual classes that I went there to go learn that they wouldn't let me take <laughs> in the yeah. first couple of years, which was all the business classes. And so I said, all right, I'm dropping out, but I, I need to treat my learning like I'm still in school. And so instead of class, I'll maybe go through, I'll go to a conference or go through an online course. Instead of a textbook, I'll read an actual book. And so just like looking, reframing that and saying, I realized that the, all the smartest, most successful people on the planet, maybe not all of them, but most of them have written and published a book. And I call it a $15 mentor because all I got to do is pay 15 bucks and spend a few hours and I can learn. And so I saw that and I saw it start paying dividends in my business. And I'd say, oh, any problem I have in my business, I'll just figure out what the problem is. And then I'll figure out the best book about that problem. And then I'll read that book and then I'll use what I learned to solve that problem. And so this is, that's kind of my entrepreneurial journey is just doing that hundreds and hundreds of times over the last few years. Nice. And so was your first company different than the self-publishing company? Because it, it seems like you fell in love with the reading process and then tried to convert it into how to help other people do that as well. Yeah. So yes and no. So in high school and college, I ran small businesses. So landscape and lawn care business in high school. I ran a, a painting business through a company called Student Painters while I was in college. And so that's really where I cut my teeth as an entrepreneur. I, I think it's kind of like the Navy SEALs hell week, except seven months long mm -hmm. and for business. And so I was number one in the company, number one in the country and running an exterior house painting business, basically. It's kind of like a franchise meets internship model. And so I did that. That built a lot of skill sets and a lot of confidence to then say, all right, I can drop out. As I was dropping out, I wrote and published a couple of books. They did decently well. And then I said, oh, hold up. Maybe there's a business here. I know I was going to drop out to start a business. I just didn't know what it was. And so then I started helping people. And then that really started taking off with self-publishing school. And then we've just keep, kept doubling down and, and narrowing the focus ever since then. Yeah. And I really like what you said in your TED Talk about... Um, the best way to serve humanity is to write a book. And I've found that through college, I didn't really like reading books and I finished and then I just stopped reading for a while. And I shared it on a previous episode of the podcast, but then I fell in love with reading like self-help and business books and psychology books. And now it's something that I just, I, I carry with me all the time. So I, I never really thought of it as a great way to serve humanity, but it has taught me a lot because that's the main way you pass information from generation to generation. And you can write a book like Stephen Covey wrote in the seventies and the sixties, and he's long gone now, but I've still read it and learned from it and recommended it to others. So when did that thought creep into your mind and be like, this is the best way I can help other people as well to create books. Cause that's the best way to help everybody. Yeah. There was a bunch of checkpoints along the journey. I'd say I did it and it did decently well. And that was the big light bulb moment for me as I remember I was snowboarding with a friend and it was a, like the week of uh, publishing my first book. And he said, Hey, Chandler, like I heard this book's doing pretty well. That's cool. Is it actually making any money? Mm -hmm. what, uh, books don't make money. And I thought for a second, I said, you know what? Actually, yes. While we were snowboarding all day yesterday, the book made over 400 bucks. And it was like, at, when I said that, I realized, oh my gosh, people are buying this book all around 
the mm-hmm. world and in, in countries I'd never even been to. It's continuing to generate income for me while I'm traveling, snowboarding, all that stuff. But this is making a difference. And this isn't just my mom and my grandma anymore. This is actual people buying this book and reading this book. And so that was cool. And then getting my first physical copy in the mail, that was a feeling of, oh, this is something I created. And long after I'm off this earth, this is still going to be here. It might be at a Goodwill, but it's going to be here. And so that was a cool feeling. And then just, and then discovering, and you mentioned the TED talk, I talk about this in the TEDx talk is the concept of leveraged impact. So the ability to do work once to create a book. And then this book goes on to impact thousands, tens, thousands, maybe even millions of people. So as an entrepreneur, I look at leverage is how do I create assets that continue to grow and scale and that can create an impact and that can grow the business. And so I believe that a book is one of the best assets that you can create from a legacy standpoint, yes, but then also for growing your business and strategically using it um, in that way. So that's just, that's where the layers have unfolded over the years. Yeah. And I think it's really cool when you get something that you created like in the mail and you could touch it and feel it, that physical, tangible object makes it real, even though you've yes. been working on it probably for months or maybe even years or sometimes. And that's another thing that people sometimes maybe want to write a book, but they get scared because it takes um, like two to five years, I think. And they have to go through a lot of the process and the marketing and doing speaking engagements and like signed events and everything, all that other stuff besides just writing the book. So tell us a little bit about how your company helps people streamline all that. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. And yeah, I think for a lot of people, they view writing a book as this intimidating thing. Like you said, Mm -hmm. it's, oh my gosh, I don't have the time to do this. And if I do have the time, it's not now I'll do it later. And so what our goal at self-publishing school is we help people write and publish a book, a quality book that sells well. And so our goal is to save people hundreds of hours in the process and save people hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in the process. And so we've got a curriculum that we take people through. We pair them up one-on-one with a coach. There's group coaching calls. There's some of the stuff we just do for them. Like when their book's ready to go, like formatting, um, ISBN, cover design, all that stuff. We've just recently started doing a lot of that because we realized, hey, people, they want to save time in this process. And so we can serve them better by doing that. And so I like to think of it like a, it's in a mix of Indiana Jones and Jillian Michaels. <laughs> like Indiana Jones, our goal is to blaze the trail and to show people what to do, what not to do, et cetera. And then Jillian Michaels, we got to hold them accountable and keep them going through the process. So it's kind of like that. It's a year of college, but way more helpful and targeted towards making consistent progress on the book. Yeah. And consistent progress is something that is preached about in all the realms of discipline. Everybody knows that how important that is. People who listen to this podcast. So How do you kind of break it down, whether it be writing a book, and we'll get into how that kind of matches up with other areas of life, but the consistent daily progress, how do you build towards that? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's a couple, there's a couple ways that we do it. If you look at chapter five in my new book, and I don't know if people will see the video version of this, or if they'll just see the audio version, but basically I look at breaking it down into eight milestones. That's the book writing journey, but it really starts with those first four, which is the more writing method. So mind map, outline, rough draft, and editing. And so what I recommend that people do is they take 15 minutes as soon as you're done listening to this podcast and mind map everything you can think of on the topic for your book. So stories that you have, lessons that you've learned, ideas. If you're a business owner, what are the broken record conversations that you have with every new client or prospect? That's probably a really great book idea, right? So mind map it, then use that mind map to, to create an outline. And you'll do that by just grouping common themes and that'll drill down into chapters. So now all of a sudden you might have a Uh, a 15 chapter outline that you can use to write your book. And then the R stands for rough draft. And you do that one chapter at a time. And so we have this thing, it's called the 30 day rough draft challenge. I'll see if I can show you here. And this is, I know you're like me, which is like, all right, how do we break this down daily and make consistent progress? So that's the goal here is say, all right, mind map and outline the book before you start the challenge and then create a goal for 30 days. Now, maybe that's a thousand words a day. Guess what? At the end of the 30 days, you're going to have 30,000 words written, which is the size of a small book, small to middle-sized book, right? And then it's, all right, how do you do two 30-minute writing sessions per day, all right? And in that, you just use the mind map outline write process per chapter, and then you track your word count, you celebrate daily, and that's pretty much it. 
Um, and so that that's what I recommend for people to make daily consistent progress towards their book. Yeah, and I like that you're do, you're saying two different 30 minute like times yeah. so that way you don't get writer's block because I feel exactly. like if you're stuck there and you're a morning person or you're a night person or you get busy at one time, breaking it down makes it a lot easier to commit to. Whereas for me, like for I read normally in the morning because I'm right out of bed. I'm, the book is right next to my bed. And I'm, I just get to go that way rather than leaving it. But in terms yeah. of writing, it's something that is pretty good as well. Yeah. And a lot of people use their mornings to make progress on the book and it's part of their morning routine. And I think it, for some people or for a lot of people, it works for some people, it's no way I'm creative at night. Cool. Do that. Um, yeah. Block off the time, whatever it works for you and make consistent daily progress that way. So how would you relate that type of mentality of daily progress and chunking it up and making the outline and then going in each specific chapter for something that's not like a book, like for example, running a business or running a side hustle mm. or getting in shape or something that a lot of people want to do a lot of things, but it feels like they're spinning too many plates at once. Yeah. Great question. There's two or three things that I do there. First off, probably you got to focus, which, which focus stands for following course until successful, right? So you got to narrow the focus and you probably need to create a list of things that you're going to stop doing. And because I think so many people, whether it's losing weight, writing a book, growing their business, it's, they take the shotgun approach, not the rifle approach, right? It's just spray and pray. Let's do a ton of stuff and hope that something works versus targeting what you're doing. This is the same exact thing we teach on the book marketing side of things, right? The shotgun versus the rifle approach, but it's very applicable to growing your business or anything else. So I think you're going to have to focus that probably will require you say either a stop doing or a not yet, not now list of like, all right, these are all the things that I need to stop doing so that I can make the time to focus on the one or two things that really matter. And then it's doing the very similar thing that I teach with books is what I teach for goal setting and what we do at self-publishing school, like with our team and with our students and all that is, all right, let's just break down the goals. And this is not revolutionary, but I think it works because it's really simple. And we're very intentional about making it simple is you can have more, no more than three goals. Mm -hmm. So let's make goals for the year, then break down to the quarter, then break down to the month. <laughs> like you can, like, this is literally right next to my desk. You can <laughs> nice. see my goals for the month. And then you can see for me, it's like, this is literally my goals for the week. <laughs> and so then I break that down into the daily and it's like, okay. I got prime time in the morning. What do I need to do during prime time today to hit my goal for the week, which will help me hit my goal for the month, which will help me hit my goal for the quarter, which will help me hit my goal for the year. So again, it's not, it's not revolutionary, but keeping it simple and actually following it is. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's where is the daily discipline, which I know you're a big fan of, is all right, the daily discipline to do that. And you're not going to change, you're not going to achieve all your goals overnight. And if you try to, you'll probably get discouraged. So just like people are like, go from not working out at all to, all right, I'm going to work out seven days a week. I'm going to do a three hour workout. I'm going to eat, uh, drink water all day and have two meals. It's just like they go to the extreme. And then two days later, they're like, crap, I knew that didn't work. I shouldn't have done, it didn't work again. I guess this doesn't work versus saying, all right, what's the simplest yep. habit that I can commit to? where I can make consistent progress. Yeah. And I'm smiling because I literally just on episode 50 for 75 hard, I had talked about plateau breakers because when somebody gets into that zone of dieting, they go crazy. They diet, they do cardio and they work out. And I'm like, yeah. you have to wait until you hit a plateau. So then you could pull another lever, whether if you started with working out, uh, then you pull the lever of eating cleaner and then you pull the lever yeah. of cardio. That way you're always busting these plateaus and not just committing everything at once because you'll get burnt out. And then over time, it all becomes, these are things that are now, I have to do these. These are part of my mm -hmm. everyday things yeah. and I don't have to think about it. That's when yeah. you know you can move on to the next level of adding something new because otherwise it's just, you're spinning too many plates and you don't really know. Yeah. But I think it all starts, like you said, to write everything down and figure out what you're actually spending time on. Because if you think about it, you know, there's 24 hours in a day, seven days a week, 168 hours. And with the lack of commute now with remote most of the time and all that stuff like you have time in the day but it always seems to be gone so people who don't like to journal or people who don't like to really write things down how can they get better at really pinpointing down because maybe it's something that they just don't want to admit to themselves yeah oh gosh that's tough i think you know when you're when your why is strong enough the day-to-day -day, it gets easier 
And so I like starting with that. And that's what I talk about it. I think it's, gosh, chapter two, maybe in my book, but it's very applicable to any goal is there's a, yeah, lo looking for why. And so begin mm. with the end in mind, as Stephen Covey would say, and, yep. but you, so you need a why, but then you also need a why. And that's where for a lot of people, when the pain of staying the same gets greater than mm. the pain of making the change, that's when they'll change. Yeah. And not until then. So when you hit, that's why you hear a lot of people addicted to drugs and alcohol, they don't make a change until they hit rock bottom. Right. And then the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of changing. Mm -hmm. And so they change. And so in our mind, it's, we have to, you can go pain or you can go, you can go upside pleasure, future, whatever, but we're okay. This is a compelling future. And so I have a vision of a compelling future. This is the telescope and the microscope. Right, you got the telescope to look out into the future, and then you need your microscope to look to the right now. And if you don't have either one of those, you're always looking out in the future, you're never getting stuff done, or you're always looking straight in front of you that you're not connecting the dots to where you're supposed to be going. So that's why I think people need that little bit of both. But if you have that strong why or that strong why now, which in the book context, I recommend people write it and put it up where they can see it, but that works for anything. Then you see that, and when it gets tough or when you hit that plateau, like you mentioned, it's not a matter of if, but when, yeah. <laughs> and when it gets tough, you'll see that. And hopefully that'll help you keep going. Yeah. And I like that. And you mentioned this new book a lot, and I wanted to wait a little bit to see all the other books that you've written and why you've come to this last book, or maybe it's not even the last one, the next one in your book writing journey. Tell us a little bit about how, now that you've seen both sides of reading books, you've gotten excited about it, you've written your own books, and now you've helped people publish your own books. What, what keeps you going to write more? Yeah, it's so I started, I wrote six books in three, three and a half years. And that was just, that was just, I don't necessarily recommend it. A lot. <laughs> it was hard, but, it, but then I think what was good since then is you have a lot of living and a lot of business growth. And so then for me, I went back and read what was my kind of, it was the original version of this book. So again, I don't know if people can see the video version, but it's Let's explain it. Know, yeah, so you've got the first version, which is published, and this was written six years ago. We've published probably five or 6,000 books since this book was published, and you've got this, the new version. So that, for me, I went back and read this book and said, oh my gosh, th this can be so much better, and I, and so I, I realized all of our curriculum had gotten better. Everything we do, everything we teach, all that, but the book mm -hmm. can say the same. So that's really what sparked me where I swore off writing a book for a while because I said, hey, I need to market the books that I have. First of all, I think it's a big mistake that authors make is they jump to the next book and they don't keep marketing the book that they have. And so I said, all right, I want to recreate this, create something that I'm really proud of that I can drop the mic and it's just the best and definitive book on if you're writing and publishing a book and you want to use it to grow your business or grow your impact, whatever, like this is the book. And so I wanted to do that. And so that's when I said, all right, I'm going to drink my own Kool-Aid and go back through this process. And so I went from picking up a pen to published in about 105 days wow. uh, and did it at a high level. And we've moved a ton of copies of the book. And really the goal is there's the reader focus goal and then there's the business focus goal. So the reader focus goal is what I've already said. And then the business focus goal is the, the first edition has brought in millions of dollars in customers for self-publishing school over the last few years. And I think this second edition will bring in tens of millions of dollars in customers for the next few years, decades, whatever. And so now it's just pointing back to that book and having that drop the mic book, which for a lot of people, if you're having the same conversations over and over again with clients in your business or prospects in your business, the best way to stop talking about it is, <laughs> is to write a book on it and then point to that book. And that book can really go out and help people and make an impact. So that's the goal. Nice. Yeah. And it's like kind of like an FAQ site on a website. It's literally like you get asked this all the time. Let's just expand upon it and have a chapter on each of those FAQs essentially, and you're good to go. Yeah. So I really mm -hmm. like that idea because I've been thinking about writing a book maybe in the future, but I'm not, I have a few topics in mind. And I think that's where maybe somebody like you would have probably just recommend writing multiple books <laughs> because it feels like it's not as big of a task as it, as I'm making it seem in my head. Yes. Yeah. Something to keep in mind for sure. I'll speak to that. So I'd say write multiple books, but only one at a time. And so mm. that can be, so we only have two rules when we're working with people. Rule number one is you can't edit while you write. 
We all know someone who has five perfectly written chapters in their unfinished book. And so you can't edit while you write. But then secondly, you can only write one book at a time. Try to catch two rabbits, you end up catching neither. Like you got to narrow the focus. And so that's where I'd recommend for you is you ask these three questions. And this is for anyone who's listening who says, hey, I've got multiple book ideas. My problem is not coming up with an idea. It's which one do I write first? I like to ask, I'll say, all right, which one can you finish the fastest? So you can get a rough draft done. Maybe you have the most content or life experience on this topic, right? Question two, which one are you most likely to finish? So not only are you going to get started, but you're going to actually get a rough draft done. And then question number three is which one's going to make me happy? Like, which one am I going to enjoy writing? Sometimes for business owners, I'll alternate that out of, hey, which one's going to grow my business? Because business growth typically makes entrepreneurs happy. But that helps narrow in on the book to write and then write that one book. And then you can, like you said, Sammy, you can kind of take some of the pressure off and say, all right, I've got other books that I'll write in the future. But this is, I don't got to fit everything in this first book. I'm just going to write this specific book for this specific person. And I'm going to write one at a time and, and then go from there. Nice. Yeah, I think I'm definitely answering those three questions in my head, and I'll have to ponder on that as I review this episode for sure. But I think I know which one I have to write first now. Cool. So yeah, that's something definitely to take away. That's why I love doing these podcasts, because I learn something yeah. just as much as the audience does every episode. That's awesome. Appreciate that. Um, so a- another question that I have is the marketing aspect. So you've written a book now, this last book that published, pretty much version two, I would say, of how to publish a book yeah. to get to 10,000 copies. How does that differ from marketing a different side of your business for example like because you're showing that you're the subject matter expert and hopefully you are obviously if you're writing a book so like how do you get that out there because you are campaigning or you're marketing your knowledge yeah so i think for people who are thinking about writing a book or you already have a book there's a lot of people maybe listening and i know certainly that i've talked to in the past who they've already published a book and it's just not selling as well as they like it to or it's not growing their business like they want and so there's a few things you need to do number one is you need to strategically structure the book on the topic of your business and this could be the pains that people have this could be the objections that you get on sales calls this could be the things that just keep coming up over and over again when people are considering working with you, right? So the best way, this that's where the book is going to improve every part of your sales process. Excuse me. This book will bring in more leads, more sales, more referrals, right? So leads, these are people who hear about you because of your book. Sales, these are people who already know about you, but decide to do business with you because of reading your book. And that's where I like to put Um, the book and sales funnels and stuff like that, because you're just going to increase the conversion of everything and help bring in more customers that way. And then referrals, give two copies of the book to every new client or customer and say, hey, here's one for you and one for a friend who needs help with, insert the thing that you help with. And so that's really how I look at it is how you use the book to grow your business. But you got to you got to write on a topic that's related to your business and then integrate it in what you do. And then when it comes to the marketing, back to the Stephen Covey piece is begin with the end in mind. So are you writing this to grow your business? Okay, if so, structure it accordingly and market it accordingly. And do that in a way where you're going to get in front of people who are prospects, use the book to start the conversation, to capture their contact information, all that stuff. And to edify you, I mean, the root word of authority is author. You can't spell the word authority without the word author, right? And so you're becoming an authority when you publish this book and then use that to build your authority and to bring in lead sales referrals. Nice. And it's good how those all three are related, obviously in the conversion funnel, but they're different targets at different points of time within the customer or potential customer being in the funnel. So it's important that you're speaking to all sides. That's great. Yeah. So where can people get all of your books and figure out more about how to start because i know you do things other than just books as well your leadership talks and with your business advice as well yeah so first and best place if if you're thinking hey this was helpful i I think i might want to write a book or i want to republish a book or whatever check out my book publish a proven path from blank page to ten thousand copies sold you can find it on Amazon. The audiobook I narrated myself. So if nice. you're into audiobooks, highly recommend that. You can check that out on Audible. And then one thing we did here is we created a link for friends of Sammy and the listeners here. So if you go to published book, like I published a book.com forward slash Sammy, first 50 people in the US who go to that page, fill out that form. We'll print, pack, and ship you a book 
no strings attached. You don't even have to pay shipping and handling. <laughs> None of that stuff. That. Publishedbook.com forward slash Sammy. And Sammy, you can do that too. You get a little <laughs> crystallized with your, with your book that you're working on. And so that's the first and best place for folks. And then if you're thinking, hey, I'd love to check out self-publishing school and see what it might be look like to work together, then you can go to self-publishingschool.com forward slash apply. Book a call with my team. We'd be happy to chat with you about your book, your goals for your book put together a plan and see how we might be able to help. I appreciate that, man. That's super cool that you have that link for us. And I'm definitely going to steal one of them. So I guess the first 49 listeners who want it <laughs> um, nice. can have it. But yeah, that, that's super cool that you're really helping people to get something that seems gargantuan. And that's the kind of the running theme. And a lot of things that when you start it, it's huge task. It's very hard to do. How am I going to get started? How am I going to get through it and make it actually successful because nobody wants to spend two years writing a book that sells like five copies and three of yeah. them are from your family members. So I think that's one of the big fears that people have and your company helping of authors do that and changing not only their lives, but the people who read the books is something that as a person who reads two or three books a month, it's awesome. So I really enjoy your work and, and the ability to help others doing that, man. That's awesome. That's amazing. Sammy, I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to another episode here on YouTube. For more videos like this, please like and subscribe.